Good afternoon. I'm Larry Kamer and this is my channel, The Fly Time Philosopher. Uh, this is a place where I like to discuss ideas that I think about while I'm uh, tying flies. Uh, today I'm going to continue in the series of uh, flies that I have uh, uh, mentioned before, uh, a minimalist set of uh, nine flies uh, that uh, I hope to utilize on the stream uh, this coming uh, season and reduce actually the number of flies that, uh, that I'm tying. I uh, am creating three styles of fly in three different colors, one hook size. I have them in little box at this point and I'll uh, put a picture on the, this frame for uh, each of the, uh, the flies. And today I'm going to be tying a uh, Sakasa style. That will also be shown uh, uh, on the frame uh, a little later in the uh, uh, video. One of the things that I realized was that I um, have gotten into certain habits in uh, fly fishing over the years, of fishing over 30 years, and you tend to uh, develop certain kind of habits, um, like certain kind of flies, like to go to certain places, um, and uh, repeat those things uh, over and over again. And then uh, breaking into uh, Tenkara just in the past uh, two seasons, um, has posed some uh, some difficulties uh, for me and I uh, have on the stream now a, a hodgepodge of all kinds of different habits from traditional Western uh, fly fishing uh, to the new uh, Tenkara things and sometimes I catch myself uh, trying to uh, fish uh, in a Western uh, fly fishing style when I'm using a Tenkara rod and uh, that uh, poses some, some channels, I, uh, challenges. I also talked about uh, the fact that I have all the gear uh, in a Western setup, uh, vest with all kinds of tools and supplies and materials and waders and boots. And, um, and I'm looking at uh, minimalizing uh, from a 10 car perspective, and that's why I'm on the uh, tying, um, uh, challenge that I'm doing for myself at this point. But I also have in mind a, a lanyard instead of the, the whole vest and a, a pocket type of uh, net that unfolds. Uh, so uh, breaking these habits um, and develop, trying to develop new ones is uh, a challenging uh, prospect um, for this aspect of my life. Uh, it's, it's kind of new and refreshing and, uh, and exciting. But uh, when you think about it, uh, habits are a difficult thing to deal with uh, in all of your life or in the rest of your life. It has to do with uh, lifestyle and health and diet and um, work habits and relationship habits and so forth. So uh, I was uh, looking at um, a book recently that really struck me. Um, I had a friend that uh, always uh, found himself in the uh, same kind of predicament time after time. And I, I asked him, I said, you know, uh, what uh, leads people to treat you in certain ways? And uh, it, we were we kind of discovered that he was in the habit of behaving in certain ways that invited some un unpleasant uh, things in his life. So this book that I found uh, and then read was uh, by Dr. Joe Dispenza, and I'll uh, show a uh, cover photo uh, of it that I have on my Kindle. Uh, and the book's title is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And uh, there's some uh, meaning in that uh, title uh, because his contention is is that 
almost your entire personality that you're conscious of and other people are and the way that you behave on a day-to-day -day basis in the world is a big accumulation of various habits. And, you know, you can see that uh, there's a point to that. You brush your teeth and you have your breakfast and then you go off to work and you drive the same way. Uh, and actually, if we didn't have habits, uh, life would be a, a, a tremendous chore. Uh, and we do a lot of these habits automatically. But it extends further than that. It goes into then uh, the way you feel about things, the way you react to things, the way you respond, how, how you relate to other people, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And his uh, book aims at trying to find things that are maybe difficult habits uh, to break, like addictions, uh, um, uh, drinking, smoking, things of that nature that may be harmful to you and those around you, and uh, that you that you would like to uh, maybe address and change. And we know that habits are very difficult to change. So um, his book uh, then deals with four steps, four major uh, parts, and he has multitude of videos on uh, line too that uh, you can view. Um, so. Uh, his first step is is that you should open the door uh, to your creative state. So in other words, you need to have a mindset to try to deal with uh, habits and in creative ways. Second thing is is that you need to kind of prune away uh, habits, particularly the ones that you don't that you don't want, and that requires some insight uh, and exploration into these. Um, habits and uh, where they are in your personality and uh, how you might uh, address them. Third thing is, is that you kind of need uh, some dismantling of some old memories that may have led to these habits and maybe rethink uh, what some of those habits mean. Uh, four, the, you then want to uh, create a new mind. Uh, so uh, you need to kind of reimagine yourself in certain ways, uh, in in positive uh, manner, uh, and and create a desire for this, those states, and then finally you want to kind of like live your new life by instituting some some habits. He does all of this through meditation, breathing exercises, physical exercise, um, visualization, and so forth, and I find uh, the book uh, very uh, enlightening. I passed it on uh, to my uh, friend uh, also and hopefully uh, it's, it's of help. So uh, I should have been tying uh, this f uh, fly along while talking. Um, I'll uh, show a final picture of it um, and that's really all I had for uh, today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll see you the next time.